moment. Hello. Welcome to the return of my Learn to Build stream here on Friday, lovely Friday the 14th of September. And one of the things I'd like to shout out is International Talk Like a Pirate Day is happening here in the beautiful Scary Waters experience. Here are the beautiful Scaries. Aren't they adorable? And uh, International Talk Like a Pirate Day is happening here on September 19th. Come in your best piratey garb with your best piratey voice. Yarg! And for today's stream, in anticipation of that, International Talk Like a Pirate Day, in anticipation of that, we're going to be pulling a cannon. So, let me just first show you in the Atlas. Scroll down or simply search for... Where is it? Oh, it's moved because it's populated. Haha! -ha. Find Scary Waters. Come check out this amazing experience by Meiju and Bagnaria. There is uh, Ebo. There is a little uh, fish trawler kind of mini game thing almost. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to the in development pirate area and I'm going to show you uh, what they've built. And uh, what they've built is going to be better than what I built today, but it's going to be a start. <laughs> and of course, once again, everyone, uh, my usual introduction. It's your favorite community manager. It's Zebulon. It's Elliot. Happy to be on stream with you here today. And we're going to do some crazy stuff today, so hopefully it's all going to work. And I'm going to teleport myself over there to save on a little bit of time, but check out this beautiful water, guys. A uh, new water shader came out uh, as part of this week's release, and uh, people are putting it to work, and it looks beautiful. It looks lovely. So what do we have here? Oh, hello. We have a little platform with some, some seaweed and some crabs I can see beneath the glass, and we have two cannons. So I'm going to go into first person mode. So look, we got pirate ship here, we got some cannons, and we have a coconut button. What could this mean? What could happen? Alright, well let's click to reset the target. And now you see, there's a target in front of us, and the cannons begin dipping. So why did I dip? Well, because it's changing their uh, their angle. So you can see when I click on it, when it's high and low, it shoots in an arc appropriately. And there is music playing, so I'm not sure if you can hear the, the little cannon sound, but there is a little cannon sound. Cool, so if we can get this right, we can hit the target. Boom! And it shatters. Isn't that great? And uh, once it shatters, it all uh, it all stops. Isn't that clever? Isn't that great? So how does that work? Okay, how does that work? So this is doing a bunch of things. Um, basically turning a bunch of things on and resetting them. So we've got uh, some movement going on here. And we've got an object here. And this is green, which means it's interactable. So if I click on it, it's doing the simple interact command, which is to fire. So it's firing because it's using something like simple dispenser, which spawns an object, right? The cannonball. And that is a dynamic object. So it has physics applied to it and it applies collision. So the target isn't actually getting destroyed. The target is an, ooh. Careful. The target doesn't actually get destroyed, right? It's an animation of a target shattering that's paused. And in front of it, there's a box. That's a trigger volume that has set to give a command when an object collides with it. And an object colliding with it can be that cannonball. So when the cannonball hits the invisible trigger box in front of the target, we'll see if I can actually hit it about here. It says play the animation and delete the object that was the cannonball. And it also then say to turn everything off and reset it. Isn't that clever? Another example of the same kind of smoke and mirror trickery is over here with this knife board. And I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to try and switch into VR. Because I don't normally do my streams in VR. Because I'm terrified. Because there's a lot... <laughs> There's a lot that can go wrong with just the audio input and output. So, let me know, Twitch chat, if you can still hear me. 
I am going to switch into VR. So we're going to go over here to OBS. And we're not going to change my mic input. Um, I guess actually we could leave the desktop audio. Let's see. So I'm going to speak into this mic. I might not hear anything, but audio still will go to hit these headphones and still go out to the stream. My hands. My VR. Alright, so this is obviously a Oculus Rift headset. And, oop, oh, I've got a white screen. Let's see if I can get out of it. Hey, get me out of Oculus Home. I can never remember how to get out, out of Oculus Home. How do I get out of here? Explore, no. Mm. Ah. Get out, guys. This is the terror. This is. All right. <laughs> I got stuck in the Oculus Home and started sounding much further away than I realized. So. Um, I know what the problem is. Maybe it's that I still have OBS open. There we go. Ah. We. Oui. Uh. <laughs> All right. We're here. We're in VR. There we go. Look at how deformed I am because I'm standing really far forward. All right. So, we will have to switch the audio over. Properties. Switch to, whoops, to Rift Audio. Okay. All right, you guys should still hear me now, even when I stand back here and I'm in the area. So, gotta stand weird, cause it's VR. Oh, come on. All right, go in the first person, I can't see where I'm pointing. There we go, we got a knife. Uh, pick up the knife. Look at that little, Look at the detail, there's a little skull on there. Isn't that cute? Oh wait, I forgot Medhew, who Medhew and Bagnaria made this. They forgot to tell me to first, you gotta reset the knives. Cool. Now I grab a knife, uh, hold the knife, and I throw it. <laughs> Once again, uh, the simulation of me being able to throw things is 100% accurate. I'm gonna get closer. <laughs> You can see we're using the same principles here as the can the, ca the cannon, All right? So I've got an object, and when it collides with a trigger volume on the stick man, it will delete the object and play an animation of a knife appearing. So to save on time, God damn it! There we go. <laughs> All right. H4. All right. <laughs> there we go. I showed you guys some 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 VR on stream for the first time. How did that look, chat? It was muffled. Sorry. I wanted because there's there's not a whole lot of point showing the knife throwing game without actually being able to throw the knife. Like the cannon one works in desktop, but the knife you need your fans. You need actual physical movement. So <laughs> getting back into Sansar. Like I was saying, same thing, right? We've got a dynamic object, and when we throw it into a trigger volume, the knife is deleted and it plays, starts an animation that shows a knife in that spot, giving the sensation that the knife you threw is now the knife stuck in the target. Uh, what happened here with two of them is I managed to get it into two trigger volumes at the same time. <laughs> so, there you are. Uh, go to Scary Waters and play with the cannons and the knives um, because that's going to be much better than the one I built. <laughs> so I'm going to go to my experiences because here's one I prepared earlier. Any Blue Peter fans? Any Brits out there remembering Blue Peter? Good old. Here's one I prepared earlier. It's just me, isn't it? Alright. Welcome to Cannon Test. So, what do we have here? We have a cannon that 
is green because it's interactable. And we have a bottle. And this bottle is from Medhue's store. <laughs> so you know it's, uh, you can see where we're going here. This is an animated bottle that I just animated. <laughs> so there's a trigger volume in this area. And when a object or an avatar, as I said it, walks into it, it plays the animation of the bottle shattering and it plays a sound of a bottle shattering. So, because I haven't built a reset yet, <laughs> I now can't show you the canon portion of that because I accidentally walked into that. Whoops. It was for testing purposes. <laughs> um, but the canon, if we click on it, it will make a sound and it will launch a giant dice. Elliot, why does it launch a giant dice? Well, no one on the store has uploaded <laughs> a cannonball. And I'm not a free to modeler, so I just buy things from the store. So, here we go. Store. Sansar.com. Sorry, the it's Todd is typing with the where the mic stand is at the face of this. Typing is all tricky sometimes. Here, let me show you. I go to store, I search cannon. I've got like a Napoleonic Civil War cannon. I've got like a parody cannon. I've got a battlement. <laughs> And I've got a Monopoly Beast cannon kind of thing. Um, that's it. If I search cannonball, you get nothing. <laughs> right? Even if I search ball, I don't get a whole lot. You know, I get a lover ball. Um, I got, again, arcade ball, but I don't <laughs> I don't get a cannonball. <laughs> despite the fact we have free cannons on the store. So, yeah. Anyone, anyone, please make me a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> to make this tutorial more valuable than it is. So it launches giant dice, because I have lots of dice. <laughs> and it makes a cannon sound, and it throws it forward. So let's go into edit scene and see the pieces it's made of, and then I'll build one from scratch. And maybe I'll use one of Sin's arcade uh, crane grab balls instead of dice. Cool. So here we are. This is a pretty basic scene, really, right? Here is the trigger volume I said. This is the key component to the whole the whole trick is this invisible blue box. And it has a script called Simple Collision. So it comes from our Simple Script collection that is free. It's in your inventory by default. So if you go into your inventory and select scripts and search by simple, you'll see you get all these simple scripts that you can stack together and do complex things. And to get the uh, to get the trigger volume, instead of sources, you go to system, and you can see it's one of the basic system things. So if I click and drag this trigger volume, you can see I drag it out. And then you can change its size with, uh, you know, changing the extents and the different numbers here. And it will change. Or you can make it a sphere as well, if you prefer. So then, to this trigger volume that I had, I added simple collision. And you see we've got agent collide and object collide. So agent collide is an avatar. And let's turn that off because that was not what we wanted. And then object collide is um, something that is a dynamic object that's been thrown. And it will, when it collides, it will activate uh, this command. And the command is hit. So we have hit the target. And then if I come in here into the box and select the bottle, you can see this is a, a bottle. And it has an animation in it. I can even show that if I... These are scene objects. This is everything that's in here. And if I go to structure and open out, you can see it's filled with a bunch of meshes and at the top here an animation. And why does it have so many meshes? Because it breaks into several pieces. So quite a lot going on in there. Um, but the bit that we care about is that the script I've added to it is simple animation. So this controls the animation that the object has. So we click on the cannon, it shoots an object, it collides with the trigger volume and sets off simple collision and says the word hit. Oops, which I just deleted. Oh, thanks for the follow or the host. I should change the notification sounds so I know which is which. But thank you. 
Okay. So we got object collide. So it broadcasts that message. And then the... Um, basically, everything is listening to all of the messages. So, uh, you know, the message hit goes out. Canon doesn't care. You know, Floating Castle doesn't care. But simple animation here in the bot goes, Ooh, the word hit. I know what to do then. I will then play the animation. And I will shatter the bottle. Now I've got to stop trying to move my camera. Wow, I've got text selected. All right. Cool. And then that's pretty much it. So that's the the bottle shattering part of the of the uh, magic trick. Let's have a look at the cannon. Uh, we don't need to look at the cannon structure. Oh, let's make this probably use when you a little bigger. Whoops. Don't want to select a different thing. There we go. I want to make that bigger. All right. So here we have a cannon. It's an object. It's static. And it has a script in it called simple interaction. So the simple interaction, the when you mouse over it, the, the interaction prompt is fire. And then the word it sends out is fire. Now I could have it do something second, do it. Uh, I could have it do something different on the second click, the third click, and fourth click, but it doesn't make sense that the more times you click on a cannonball, it would do different things. So I just have on the first click, it just does the command fire, and then the second, third, or fourth click will just behave as the first click, because there's not anything different here. And then the max events per second are 10. So if you really want to click fast and shoot a lot of cannonballs, you can. Cool. And then the second script in this canon is simple dispenser. And you know what? I think I will open up the structure so you can see how many scripts are in this canon. So this is the canon object, and these are the things it's made of. So it's a, got a physical volume, it's got a mesh, and then it's got three scripts inside it. We'll talk about the second script now, which is simple dispenser. And dispenser will spawn an object. Couple of things. One, it has to be an object from your inventory. So it has to be something you either purchased or created and exists in your inventory. Hey, old geezer looking. Thanks for joining uh, joining the Twitch stream. And uh, Gindapul, thanks for calling out there's an old cannibal somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised if it just doesn't appear under the word cannon or ball. <laughs> Maybe it's in German or something random. I'll have to go hunting. Okay, so simple dispenser spawns an object. Rule number one has to be in your inventory. And rule number two has to have been imported into Sansar as a dynamic object. So, this is a little bit tricky, because there's a bunch of stuff on the store that was imported as a static object, and then you can go in and change it into a dynamic object, so it becomes a football or a beach ball that you can pick up and throw or kick about. But if it was imported as a static, dispenser will spawn it as a static, which means it won't move. It won't fly through the air, it won't fall to gravity. It will just, like, sit still and won't be movable at all. So you either have to import yourself yourself or message the creator in our Discord and be like, hey, did you actually import this as a dynamic object or as a static object? Because you can't... Basically, Simple Dispenser will just pull it as it is from the inventory. It won't pull it from any settings um, you've changed. That will change, though, in the near future. At least I hope so. <laughs> because soon we're coming out with the ability to save to inventory. So you'll be able to do what I've done here, build a test area, put a bunch of scripts in a canon, and then save that as one object and put it in your inventory. And then you can go into another scene and pull it out of your inventory as one single object. So hopefully with Simple Dispenser, that means I'll be able to give um, you know an object, make it dynamic, and give it like a light, and then save that, and then t sell Simple Dispenser to pull that version of the thing out of my inventory. Don't actually know if that's going to happen. Like, if that's how that's going to work. I hope it's how it's going to work. <laughs> but certainly, uh, the ability to save to inventory uh, one object with any lights or scripts or anything else you've added to it, that's hopefully coming out very shortly. Hopefully in our next patch update. Uh, towards early October. So stay tuned for news on that. All right, so let's get back to this. Simple dispenser it is listening for the command fire. That comes from the simple interaction of clicking on the object. Cool. Um, it is then going to throw the object 
um, Zebulon dice materials fixed, <laughs> which is the one you saw. Um, let's see if I can find something else. So this is a simple scroll through my entire inventory. And I'm going to see if I can actually... i got a better idea. Instead of finding one of Sin's arcane balls, I'm just going to download one that I don't have. And then it will appear at the top of my inventory list. You're a genius, Elliot. All right. I just did that on another screen. And you can now see Sin Green Ball. So we're going to go here. And we're going to go Sin Green Ball. And I hope that was a dynamic object. Actually, we can try that out drag and drop it into the scene and we can see by default it is dynamic so it's a ball that will um, bounce and fall and float and fly well actually won't do any of those things but it will be <laughs> it will work with a cannon kind of like a cannonball cool so it's going to shoot a green ball of a smiley face out of it now this position offsetting is all the kind of tricky stuff that you're going to want to do in a test area and because I built this before I already figured this out Basically, the position offset is where it's going to shoot the cannonball from. And it's based off of an offset from where the object sits. So which direction is going to be minus and which one's going to be plus is just kind of trial and error work right now to find out if you need to go three forward or three back or you know in the Z or in the Y to get it to spawn the right point. And then we could give it a bit of rotational spin if we wanted to, or um, so the ball changes with different faces and a little bit randomized. Um, and we can also have the uh, velocity, so that's probably the main thing. Um, so you may notice that the uh, it's in minus 10, that doesn't mean it's minus 10 speed, it means it's giving it velocity in that direction, the direction that we care about. So... Let's, whoops, I just, again, deleted that. So let's add a reset button, and then we can do a little bit of test work and build one from the ground up. Okay, we've got a button. We're going to put it in the ground here. And we're going to right-click on it here in Scene Objects, and we're going to go Add Script. And then we're going to click the script, and we're going to scroll down until we find Simple Interaction. There it is. And it's going to be, the command's going to be reset. And the interaction prompt is going to be reset, all caps. Cool. And this animation will do a single play and it won't begin on load. Then we will add a script that is simple animation. And it will play when it hears the word reset. And then we don't need the other two. So the animation of the button being pressed will not start on load. It will play once, and it will play when it hears the word reset, which um, happens when you click on it. Cool. And then I'll show what else it did, because I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you about the most important bit. Look at the cannon. So it's not just a simple interaction, a simple dispenser. It's also a simple sound, because it's going to make a sound. <laughs> that is like so key to game design and feedback is that when something is interactable when it makes a sound even if it doesn't move or do anything if it makes a sound that feedback is so important um as you may have noticed with when i stepped on the bottle and broke it and it made the smashing glass sound so this has a sound of a cannon firing but it was a little quiet so we can make that louder and part of the problem here is probably because it's not set to an audio emitter so we can fix that in version 2 that we'll make in a little bit cool so let's also for this button add another script and it will be simple sound and it will play the sound when it hears the word reset and it will play a sound I've uploaded to my inventory um, and it will play this tape cassette uh, sound. Cool, now then we need to do some other things. The cannon, simple dispenser, destroy all objects, that will be reset. So when we hit the reset, it'll destroy all the cannonballs we fired. And then, I'm not entirely sure how to do it for the animation, but that's the one we've got to figure out next. And why am I flying over here? Select it. I can just select it and see objects. There we go. Okay. Play range A. Hmm. 
if it plays range A and range A is frame 0, 0, that should bring it back to its assembled form. And hopefully when it receives another hit, it will play again. This might break the animation though. I'm not entirely sure that that will work. <laughs> it should, I think. That sounds about right. What do you guys think? What do I know? On live stream, talking as if I know how to build cannons. What do any of us truly know? All right, I'll hop into this experience now. And again, you know, I like doing this in a little simple scene kind of test area, so um, so it builds quicker. All right, we're gonna run over here, and we're gonna fire the cannonball. Beautiful. So it makes a sound. It shoots a cannonball. It shoots it out the front of the cannon. It's maybe a little bit far forward. It's shooting it from right there. <laughs> um, and every time the, you know, the, again, we've kind of messed up with the sound a bit. With that, we set the sound to emanate from the object and not from an audio emitter. That we can have more control over the sound. So it's kind of far. But maybe you can just hear it as a little bit of tinkling. Because it plays the sound every time an object goes through here. All right. Let's try hitting the reset and see what that does. So that played the sound. It played the animation. Played it once. Did make a little sound. It was a little bit quiet. Maybe my settings are... Yes. Uh-oh. And hey, it reset the glass. Let's try the cannon. That's much louder. Okay, it's broke the animation. But you could hear the glass break more easily. All right, so that didn't reset the animation we wanted to, because now it won't play again. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe this is the bit I should have been more prepared for. Um. I can see Leslie. Leslie, help. Why won't my animation reset or replay? <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, this is Leslie. He's on the action team. He's awesome. And he's really helpful. Leslie, what did I do wrong? I've got right here is my bottle. And I set up a reset button that says play range zero zero so it goes back to the zero frame but when it receives the hit command even though it plays the uh the sound of it getting hit it doesn't play the animation again um so is the if you could try putting the hit on uh, play range after that and do like zero to a hundred or something at the end frame take it off of Okay. trying to see if that helps. Because <laughs> it did work. It did shoot a cannonball. It did hit the trigger volume and the glass bolt shattered. But then after the reset, it wouldn't shatter a second time. Let's see if this works. All right. We'll hop into this. They can't see you, Leslie. Oh. You, do you want? Do you want to stay hidden, or do you want to wave? <laughs> okay, here's the cannon. Look, oh, so it plays it, and then we hit the reset, and it reforms, and we fire it a second time, and same problem. Same problem. It is not a. Uh, not smashing a second time. Hmm. Can I see the trigger volumes? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the trigger volume. Uh yeah, so simple collection on object collide hit. Live streaming and troubleshooting. 
Um, Bagnari actually just sent me something in the store. That's a simple reset. Description extens extension of simple animation two has an auto reset after a number of seconds. Hmm. But can I just do an auto reset on a button? Have it reset on the uh, on the object that exits the volume because that might reset it. To yeah. No. If, oh, I just wanted to be able to smash it the second time when I hit the uh, hit the buttons. Hmm. I don't have a quick fix for you. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Thank you for trying, Leslie. <laughs> say bye, bye, say bye, Leslie. Bye. <laughs> okay, so we don't know why that happens. It's interesting that it maybe it just needs to reset from frame one. No, because frame one would it be like frame one of it playing, which would be frame one of it shattering. Huh. See, the weird thing is, I swear I got this to work. Well. Well. That's stalled things a little bit, hasn't it? I'm going to take a sip of water. Twitch chat, do you have the answers? Why will it not play a second time? Because I have. I have, like, this this play range A reset works in another experience that I have. So you can reset my airship, and it will start flying again. Here, let me... Let me show you. Let's go to my treehouse. We'll come back to the cannon in a minute. Let's see if we can troubleshoot this by going back to the treehouse. Ah, okay. Apparently, Bagnaria tells me, wonderful coder Bagnaria, says that the issue is a, is a bug. So... She has a script that will fix it. Called Simple Animation 2. All right. Let's have a look and see if my thing is still working in here then. So welcome to my treehouse. It's pretty rad. It's got some pretty sick beats. And these buttons here control things. So it spins little e equals mc squared spins this post around and this one will reset the airship to over here and it doesn't start playing again I think our or does it. it takes like a long time for that airship to start moving what about if I hit the play button one two three four five marshmallow there we go okay yeah, so these buttons are play, and pause, play, and pause on the airship, and then this one resets it to its position. But then you have to hit play again to make it fly. Cool. So, by <laughs> so what we've learned is that this is an issue. Whoops, no, I don't want to edit this scene. Whoops. Oh, I don't want to be here at all. Uh, now we've got to do all the downloading. No. Misclick, Elliot. Misclick. I was thinking about editing, but I was editing. Editing the wrong one. And we're back in. Okay. My experience is. Instead, edit cannon test. <laughs> More loading screens. It's alright, guys. I will totally cut this out. <laughs> cut this video into two parts, and we'll totally miss this middle bit. All right, so we're gonna clear this. And we are gonna use Simple Animation 2 from Bagnaria's store that apparently is better. <laughs> so we're gonna go Simple Animation 2. Um, and I guess we'll use it this way. And we'll see if that works. Oh, it's a full spectrum upload. Thanks, Magnoria. Just uh, search the store for simple, simple animation 2. It's free, and it's a slight improvement on our animation that apparently has this bug that our users found that I will now tell people. 
to go and fix. <laughs> and hopefully it'll be included in the next release. All right, revisiting the cannon test. Loading up. Loading up. Ooh, winning back Zelda is suggesting maybe resing a fresh bottle instead of resetting it. Um, that is a good idea, but I don't know how to really do that. <laughs> so, we shoot the cannon. The bottle smashes. We hit reset. The bottle reappears. We shoot the cannon and... Nope. <laughs> nope. How do I make it play after a reset? Pagnaria, please help. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. What we could do is we could delete the object and spawn a new one. Right? We could do that. Okay. Here's what we'll do. Duplicate the bottle. This bottle. We add a script. And then the script is simple, not simple debugger, simple dispenser. Can I, hmm, okay, rethinking that plan. The trigger volume, the trigger volume, we add a script. The script is simple dispenser. The object <laughs> is the bottle. <laughs> and we dispense the object on the reset. And we destroy all of it on the reset. Then what order that's going to happen? No, wait, this doesn't work. This doesn't work because the original bottle will still be there. I'll just spawn on top of one, on top of the broken glass. <laughs> I was trying to, trying to figure out how I can make an object, just delete the object and create a new version of it. I don't think that's going to work. Hmm. Okay, apparently, uh, FYI, the issue in simple animation has been fixed, but apparently just hasn't been released yet. So, expect that in the next release. Um, but I have a way. <laughs> I have a way we're stuck in a corner here. All right. Well, never mind. Let's instead get on to some more complex ideas, because right now it automatically hits the bottle. So we're going to make that more interesting. We're going to introduce an element of gameplay. So let's have some more buttons. We'll move that one over there. Go away. Shoo. You go over there. And then we'll create a duplicate of it. And we'll put that here. And we will open it up in properties. And instead of reset, it will be forward. And we'll move it forward. And then also play the simple animation on the word forward. And a simple sound on the word forward. But instead of the click sound, it'll play a beep. Cool. And then this <laughs> will add a script. And that script will be simple mover. And the move event will be forward. There won't be a re so the reset event will be reset, and the position offset will be minus five. Over time, two seconds. Cool. And we don't want to change the rotation. And maybe we won't have the ease and ease out because I'm not entirely sure what that does. <laughs> cool. And now we'll move it back a little bit like that. Oh, I said move it forward five, so wait, it was it was here when it hit the target. Okay, let's just move it forward two then. Instead of five. Cool. Build that. So now 
you have to hit a button to move the cannon into position and then fire the cannon <laughs> and then I'll hit the target and then uh, that'll be it basically yeah let's see if that works Thanks for jumping in, Leslie, Bagnari, and a whole bunch of chat. Okay, so I click this, and oh, it's not a dynamic object, so it doesn't move. Well, the cannonball still works. Yay! That's a very satisfying bottle smash, and that sound happened to lines up perfectly. By the way, I got the sounds from freesound.org. Feel free to donate to them. And you can enjoy a wonderful collection of sounds, such as beeps and other things. <laughs> Lots of good sounds on freesound. It's a good website for just grabbing little, little bits you need. Well, it's also fun to make your own foley. I love recording my own foley if I can have the time to sit down and do that. Fun fact, all of the doors in the original Star Wars trilogy, the sound, the Foley sound that they recorded for that, is a letter being pulled out of an envelope, and you get that whoosh, sliding sound. And that's all of the that's all of the doors in Star Wars. Alright. Forward! There we go. It moves forward. And now it hits the target. I mean it hit the target anyway because it just rolls <laughs> until it hits the target. But you can see, you know, we've now got um, some buttons that we could set up to move it around a little bit. So, what could we, what else could we do? We've got one that moves it forward. Um, the second click should probably be back. Whoops, no. Yes, second click is back. And then place that one back. And where is the simple mover? Simple mover. Simple animation. Wait, what? Simple sound. Simple interaction. Oh, the, of course, simple movers on the cannon. Durr. That one moves back on back. Over time, two seconds. Cool. So. We can duplicate this button. Um, and this button can be turn. So it can be left and right. And then the rest of the sounds are on the left. Um, oh, wait, no. I'm messing things up here. We don't want the stop sound on back. We want to go simple sound plays on both the command forward and back, which do commands it gets. And that's the same for this one. It's going to get left, comma, right. So on both those commands, it will it will play that. Um, so that means we now need on this another script. That's a simple mover that's going to turn it. So simple move. Another simple mover. Badoom. Okay. Movement is left. I wish we could duplicate scripts we've added to an object. So it's going to rotate 50 degrees. Cool. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to be left or not. That might be to the right. <laughs> reset event is reset. Um, cool. And then we go add script. And we have another, another simple mover. There we go. And it's move event is right. It's recent event. What is that? And it's going to be minus 50. Over time, two seconds. So we'll now have a button that will move it forward and back. And then we'll have another button that sends it left and right. Although once you get it off center, there's no way to make it reset. Eh? <laughs> <laughs>
I think Bagnaria was telling me in Discord that I could, that this would work if I made it 1-1 one, one instead of 0-0. Zero, zero. So we will try that, because we may as well, because we only get one shot in before it breaks anyway. <laughs> may as well give it a go. See how that plays out. Cool. So... Fingers crossed, the reset thing will work this time, and if not, we'll have a cannon that we can move, and hopefully the reset button will make it <laughs> shoot straight again. Okay. Turns to the left. This is going to turn it to the right. So I should probably have another button to make it straight. Hmm. That's not happy. <laughs> oh yeah, and forwards are relative to its compass, not to where the wheels are actually facing. That's unfortunate. Well, hit the reset. Oh. Um, was it just having major delay? It is moving very laggily now. Okay, no, I just did reset over like a weirdly long time. Okay, fire the cannon! And the animation <laughs> reset didn't work. Well, never mind. You guys can see the principles that I'm employing here with simple scripts, right? Simple interaction makes it something we can click on. Simple dispenser will spawn an object in an inventory that is dynamic. Um, and simple sound, we can tie it to the same command of that simple dispenser is listening to, which is the command word fire. So it plays a sound whenever it fires, and that is just so critical. And then, at least before we reset it, you know, when the dynamic object comes into the trigger volume here, it hears the word hit. It plays the animation of the bottle, and the animation of the bottle is to appear to shatter as the ball hits it. So. There it is. And we can also have some fun by adding simple mover to the cannon that is listening to some forward, back, and left, and right commands from these simple interactions. And we added some sounds to them as well. But. Uh, unfortunately... This, does this one still break? I guess so. I guess the third click needs to be a reset. It needs to be the commands to tell it to reset to its original position. And yeah, and then we can have a target that will successfully play or not. <laughs> but there you go. There is the principles of using simple inter simple scripts. The principles of using simple interaction, simple mover, simple dispenser, simple sound, simple collision, simple animation, all these scripts that are in your inventory to smash a bottle of pirate noir. That will then shatter. There you go. So you can make it yourself. Uh, feel free to try it. And if you can figure out the reset or find someone in our Discord that can help you figure out the reset, then there you go. <laughs> you can fire at the bottle more than once. <laughs> Evidently, uh, Bagnaria met here, figured it out in Scary Waters, but for, for some reason, we can't quite get it to be right, which is unfortunate. But hey, that is, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I would have done more if I could figure out how to make the reset happen, but oh well, never mind. We can, we can do though, is we can put the, uh, we can set this. So it's the simple mover for left and right. Um, instead of the reset event being reset, it's gonna be center. So that'll pull it, put it to, oops, 
lived in America too long. I spelled Santa two different ways now. And now, the simple sound will also play on left, right, or center. And the oh, the animation isn't playing on left, right, or center. And then the third click is center. There we go. So it should turn to the left, turn to the right, and then turn back to the middle. And then this will move it forward and back and forward and back. So what we can do is we can make this target a little bit harder to hit by selecting both these objects. And Whoops, don't want to move them that way, just want to move them up this way. Maybe. Put them up here. Uh, we can find a platform to put underneath them. That will scale, whoops, we'll scale down that much. Make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay. And let's, instead of making this move uh, 50 degrees, let's make it move more like 30 degrees instead. That's much, much, maybe even less than that. Maybe just, uh, just a little bit. Because it will, at the distance, it will change the, the, the hit a lot. Let's just make it 10. Let's just make it 10. Because over that distance, there'll be a lot of variance. Cool. And then what we can do is we can take this platform, this trigger volume, and the bottle. And actually, I'm going to make the platform more small. Yeah. And we're going to bring that up until it's just touching the bottom of the bottle. Bring it across here. And we'll bring it to the right a little bit. Cool. And then we'll select this and the bottle. Like bottle, platform, trigger volume, control D to duplicate. And I'll put one next to it. We'll put one over here. We'll put one below it. In lieu of being able to make it respawn, we'll just have more of them. And now the game is to destroy all nine of them. See? This is how you, this is how you think. Like a game dev and an engineer. I couldn't get one thing to work. How can I make it work? A different way. <laughs> I'll just give you a lot of things to shoot at. Problem solved. Problem solved. And Bagnari again. Very helpful part of the guys who made the... Bagnari also made the Sky Waters and Medhu. Sending me some details in Discord on how to... How I can make the animation work. So we can give that a go afterwards. So... It shoots. Oh, right. They're all set to the same command. So if you hit one, you hit all of them. Great job, Elliot. Great job. And yeah, ten even 10 degrees is too far. That's way, way too far. So move it forward. <laughs> it's also just like not enough velocity. Okay. All right. We got five minutes of the stream left. So let's try. Let's try this. Okay. So the fun thing is, is we can select more than one. Okay. Let's, this is hit nine. This is hit eight. This is hit seven. This is hit six. This is hit five. This is hit four, this is hit three, and this is hit two, and this is hit one. <laughs> cool, and then we'll go here, probably could just not here, and we'll select the bottles. So let's start at this one. Uh, okay, so this one is hit nine. <laughs> this one is hit eight. This one is hit seven. That one is hit three. That one is hit two. That one is hit one. That one is hit uh, nine, seven, eight, six, five, four. This is hit 
six. And then this one has hit five. Cool. And now we just need to do the same for all of their animation triggers. So I've going to trigger volumes. Wait, did I do it to the trigger volumes or to the bottles? I did it to the bottles, didn't I? Wait, but I also did it to the trigger? Well, humans? What? Did I? Okay, I did it twice. <laughs> I've already lost track. Okay. This guy. We need less of your turniness. We just need a little five degree variation. This is going to be fun. I have no idea if actually, you know, this is <laughs> going to be winnable. I don't think we have enough variance. Where's the other simple mover? Left, right, there we go. Cool, and then we need to give it a lot more velocity for it to have any hope of doing this. So let's go back to the simple dispenser. Uh, simple dispenser. Give you a velocity of 25. And maybe an upward velocity of 10. So it's more, maybe even 15. Eh, maybe that's a bit too much, do 10. Cool. And then if I select all of these, Bagnaria has told me the secret code for how to do the reset. A reset is one one, and then the play range, oh, so this is all the hit commands. Ah, I don't wanna do that. But this can be hit one. Um, actually, we'll do we'll make it hit five, so it's the center. <laughs> and then play frame nine to ninety. <laughs> well, that might just work. Let's give it a go. I'm excited to see. At least we should be able to shoot at each one in turn. <laughs> Old geezer lurking, saying he's gonna stick to exploring. Well, you know, that's fine too. <laughs> this is welcome to the nearing the end of my learn to build series. I'm not actually sure what I'm gonna do the week after this, but this is definitely the complex end. I wanted to end in a bang with something a little bit more complex. Okay, there we go, and hit just that one. <laughs> definitely is going um, much higher up. Hey! I mean, the target area is really big, so. Well, this, is, this isn't bad. I mean, <laughs> we're going to need much more minute movement controls because we can't hit the rest of them now. And that should line up in the center now. And then fire from here. Oh, okay, so we'll <laughs> now it's respawning the ball every time it smashes it. That's a little strange. It's also spawning balls over here for some reason. Now we hit reset. What about now? Nothing? Okay. Well, we can't figure out the reset. But that's okay, because we figured out how to make multiple ones, uh, multiple targets that you can fire at. Cool. So, I'm going to edit the scene, and I will publish this so you can explore it um, right after the show. And we'll call it Fire Z Canon. Uh, work in progress. Check out. Scurry waters instead. Yeah, we'll save that. Um, this is a really terrible. Really, I have to, to resave. I can't. Ugh. I can't. I have to type this all out again because I wasn't where I wanted to take my sc screenshot. That's. There's, Oops, that's what fires you cannot fire. Let's see, cannon, work in progress. Check out scary orders for better cannons. Add screenshot. Save. Cool. So 
you can now come check this out, guys, and <laughs> take pot shots at glass bottles and can have some fun with it. I mean, you know, this is pretty advanced stuff, but this is just kind of a proof of concept that what you can do by stacking simple animations together to make a cannon that you can move and you can fire and plays a little sound and will smash a bottle when it hits it. Great. So I think for me, maybe that's um, a little a little cap to the Learn to Build series. We started with revisiting the UI and just being able to place an object and we started talking about lights and audio and being able to make your own home, making it feel like a home. And we took took a look at some of the fun things you could do with simple scripts like making a door that you can open and close as well as um, being able to make objects that you can pick up and throw and making things feel a little bit more a little bit more tangible and interactive so that's been my journey with you for these past few weeks uh, definitely give me your suggestions on discord on twitter on twitch and wherever you can find me of what you'd like to see next on learn to build because uh, I want to keep doing this every week. I'm just uh, now might go back <laughs> to tinkering with an experience I've been building that um, I'd love to show you guys. So, all right. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Ta-ta for now.